Hi everyone and welcome to this time-lapsed version of a very different kind of painting for me. It's my first attempt at a car in pastel. So I hope you enjoy seeing this come together. It's a very special piece for me to have worked on as it's for my dad's birthday. Happy birthday dad. I'm going to try and release this on his birthday as this year, due to all the disruptions everywhere, I'm not getting to visit in person. But that's him in the driver's seat of the Lotus Sunbeam rally car. And I hope that he and all you guys enjoy seeing this come together. If you haven't already, please do subscribe here on YouTube for all my free videos. Make sure you like this video if you enjoy it. And also consider checking me out over on my Patreon channel as I'll be making some full length tutorials from this piece, I'm sure, in the near future but lots of other tutorials in my catalogue over there already. I decided to have a go at this on pastel matte paper as I was concerned about the amount of tiny detail and straight edges on the car. So pastel matte is great for allowing a lot of extra detail but then on the other side of that, I was a bit concerned about having to produce such a detailed background. Even though I wanted to create a lot of blur and motion in the background and really only have the car in focus. I wanted to try and capture some of that motion in the picture. So I'm starting off with the background as always, blocking in the line of trees. And you can see from the photo reference that I changed the composition a little just to allow a little bit more sky to the top left, allow a little bit more light into the painting as the whole thing was very dark otherwise. So using a mixture of soft pastel and some of my pan pastels too, uh, you can see me break out many of the pan pastel blenders in this piece. They were fantastic for softening everything especially in the background. Where normally I would use my fingertip, the blenders could get a much smaller area of contact on the paper, allowing me a bit more precision when I was blending. But for the background, I softened everything a lot, added a little bit of blur to everything just so that it's not quite in focus. But it was quite a long process building up the trees in the background. Working from dark to light, as always. If you don't get those dark areas in first, your brighter greens won't show up. It won't be nice and contrasted. And there is that area of real darkness just behind the car and behind the people who are standing, the spectators. And I wanted that area to be super dark because I want the top of the car, the brightest areas of the car, to really jump out against that. So I spent a good few hours just on the greenery in the background. I really dislike painting trees. It's something that I've had to grow to like over the years, but I still can't say that I enjoy it until I'm about halfway through. I always dread a background with lots of trees in it. And that's something that I go into much detail on my Patreon channel, as it's one of the things that I've struggled with in the past. I tend to try and cover lots of different subject matters rather than just portraiture and one of the main things that I focus on in a lot of my tutorials is how to work on backgrounds. I always find that tripped me up at the start. I could paint the main subject but I just didn't have the confidence to tackle a full background like this. And even when you have done quite a few, there's still a little bit of a worry sometimes, especially when working on a different paper. Uh, with the pastel mat though, I found that it was great for keeping the looseness in the background. And I didn't use any pastel pencil at all, except on the car itself. So I really tried to keep it loose with no detail in the background, even when tackling this crowd of spectators. In the actual photo reference, they were so blurry that some of them had three heads, like the camera had caught them in motion watching the car going around the corner, which was kind of cool, but I didn't fancy painting three heads on some of them. 
So I just tried to simplify what I could see as much as possible, breaking it down into blocks and shapes of colour and avoiding going into any detail at all. Sometimes the less you do with the background, the better it works out, especially if you're intending to put something very detailed in front of that. So while this crowd might look a little messy and unfinished, I know that later on when the detail in the foreground happens, that that area will make more sense. So sometimes you just have to trust what you've done is enough. You can always come back and add more detail later, but the key sometimes is just to not overwork the background. And the car really is the part that I was looking forward to most to really test out pastel matte and see just how crisp and fine detail I could get. And what better way to test that out than with a motor car. All of those very fine edges but still making use of the soft pastels a lot of the time and then coming back in with my pastel pencils just to neaten the edges, make everything nice and crisp. But if I were just to use the pencils on their own, it wouldn't have anywhere near the same amount of punch and vibrance in the colour. The soft pastel pigment is great for going on the paper really solidly and giving you really solid, vibrant colour where you want it. But the pencils definitely were very useful in the whole of the car because as you can see, there are lots of little details and sharp lines and then the detail inside the car as well with both of the drivers and their helmets. So a mixture of both soft pastel and pencil for inside the car. And then the trickiest part, I think, was trying to get a little bit of a likeness to my dad. And I spent a while working on this, just trying to get a hint of his features. And I think in the end, when I stand back, it really does look like him, so I was really pleased. It also looks a bit like my brother, so that's a good sign. There's family resemblance at least. So on to the rest of the car and I gotta say these parts were really satisfying to work on. I enjoyed this part. All the little fiddly details and just taking each little section at a time. Working on getting each little edge nice and crisp. And I love being able to take older photographs and inject some life back into them trying to look for more colour. The original photograph is quite yellowed with age. This rally was from the 1980s in Sligo. So it's an old photograph. It's been lying about in a photo album for many years. But I really liked the action and I liked that crowd in the background and the fact that you could actually see my dad's face in it because that's not always the case with these shots. But it was a matter of trying to eliminate some of the yellow tint on everything and bring a bit more vibrance to the old photo. I always try to imagine that I'm actually standing there, seeing it with my own eyes. Irish light has such a lovely quality to it. Greens really sing. And when you get a sunny day there, the light really is beautiful to paint. So that's what I'm imagining when I'm looking at the old photo. I'm trying to liven it up a bit with my own memories of being outside, witnessing this sort of thing in person. So again, all the little details getting added in mostly with the soft sticks, but then neatened and tweaked into place with those sharp points of the pastel pencils. And I think I spent uh, a couple of days maybe on the car alone. Lots of the details look a lot more detailed than they are. For example, the riding up the side of the car, really just a hint at that is enough to suggest 
what's really there, as I couldn't read it in the photograph. So it's surprising how loose you can be, and still it can look quite detailed when you step back. So lots of stepping back from a piece like this, getting some distance from it, judging my colours, even looking at its reflection in the mirror behind me as I work. All of that's helpful, especially when you're trying not to go into too much detail on a background. So similarly with this foreground area, I tried to keep it loose, not worry too much about, for example, every blade of grass or every little stone that's on the road. I really wanted our attention and our focus to just be on the car. Everything else is a bit of a blur. So just working at the shadows on the left side. In the photo reference, this is a little different, this area, as there are people here, but I eliminated those and added a bit more of the sign, which I think works better. And now for this section, I actually turned the painting around. There's a little red and white ticker tape across the front of the spectators, and I was in two minds whether to add it in. But I like the idea of continuing some of the red and white theme across the painting more. But I had nowhere to lean my hand as I finished otherwise. So I turned the painting around. You can see it's much easier to make a straight line and add those little red marks down the tape. Makes it much easier going at it from this direction. And also just to show you how I created some of the cloud of dust behind, just rubbing the lighter pigment onto my finger and then patting it onto the paper. Final touch now, that springy aerial on the top of the car. And I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this come together. It was a lot of fun to work on. My first car portrait in pastel, but perhaps not my last. So once again, please do subscribe here on YouTube. Check me out on Patreon if you're interested in learning more from me. And finally, a big happy birthday to my dad. Thanks for watching.